Hello again everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to check out Houston Command Center, a nifty server management utility that gives you a full management console right aside your favorite web browser. And there's all kinds of things you could do within this command center. For example, you could create users, you can add a file share to your server, you could even set up ZFS pools within Houston. It's an awesome piece of software, and we're going to check it out in today's video. But what exactly is Houston anyway? Well, Houston Command Center consists of a set of packages that you can install for free on a supported Linux distribution. And if it looks familiar to you, there's probably a reason for that. Houston is built on top of Cockpit, something that I've covered on this channel before. Cockpit is a project that has the same goal as Houston. It provides you with a graphical user interface to help you manage your servers. But what Houston does is take Cockpit and gives it additional features. In a way, Houston is kind of like DLC for Cockpit, but without the price tag. Like Cockpit, Houston is free. So what I'm going to do in today's video is give you an overview of Houston. In the next section, I'll be comparing it directly to Cockpit, so that way you can see the difference between the two. After that, I'll go over Houston in more detail. We'll dive in, we'll install it. It's going to be a ton of fun, so let's just get started. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to install Cockpit. We'll install Houston later in the video, but again, I want to show you what's different between Houston and Cockpit. So what I'll do is install Cockpit right now. You don't have to follow along with this part of the video if you do want to follow along, because we'll be installing Houston shortly. The whole point, again, is to show you the difference in this section. Now the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that you install all available updates. That probably goes without saying, but it is a good practice. In fact, I have an entire video that covers exactly what you should do every time you set up a brand new Linux server, and I'll leave a card for that video right about here. So I'll leave it up to you to update all of your packages. On my end, I ran sudo dnf update in order to install all the updates on my server. I'm using Rocky Linux, as you can see here from the command prompt. But again, I'll leave it up to you to install all available updates, and then we'll continue. Once you have everything up to date, installing Cockpit is really easy. In fact, you only have to install a single package. Basically, what we'll do is install the Cockpit package, and on your distribution of choice, the package name should be the same. I'm going to run sudo dnf install cockpit on my end, but on your end, if you use a different distribution, then all you should have to do is change your package manager because the package name should be the same on most distributions. Anyway, on my end, I'm going to install the cockpit package, so I'll press enter. And here we go. Now in my case, it's going to install 56 packages. That's okay. It just means that there's going to be quite a few dependencies as part of Cockpit. Since Cockpit lets you do all kinds of different things when it comes to managing your server, it's going to need some additional packages to facilitate some of the things that it enables you to do. Anyway, I'll answer why here for yes. And now it's downloading. And as you can see, Cockpit is now installed. Now, depending on your distribution of choice, it's possible that Cockpit might not be running. What we could do is run systemctl, and then status, and then we could check the status of the Cockpit socket, just like that. On my end, it's not only disabled, it's also not running. Depending on your distribution of choice, it might be the same for you as well. It's possible also that it could be running and might be enabled. Different distributions set this up differently, but what I'm going to do is enable this right now, and I can do that by running sudo and then systemctl. I'm going to enable it. I want it to start right now rather than the next boot, and I'm going to execute this command against the unit that is known as cockpit.socket. Now I have an entire tutorial that covers systemd in more detail if you want to learn more about what I'm doing here, but essentially the short version is that I'm enabling the cockpit socket, which means it's going to start listening on port 9090, as soon as I started up. And starting it was that easy. Now let's take a look at Cockpit, and what I'll do is type in the IP address of the server that I just installed it on. On my end, that was 10.10.10.217, I believe, and the port number should be, again, 9090. And right now it's telling me that the connection is not secure. 
That's only because I have yet to install an SSL certificate, so we could safely ignore this particular warning. So I'll click on Advanced and I will proceed to this particular site. And here we have the login screen for Cockpit. It might look a little bit different for you if you run a different distribution. Each distribution might put their logo here like Rocky Linux did, but other than that, the functionality should be exactly the same across distributions. But what do we use to log in with? Well, with Cockpit, all you have to do is type in the username and password of a legitimate Linux user, and then, well, you can log in. So what I'll do is type my username, and then I'll type my password on the server, and let's see what happens. And as you can see, I am logged into Cockpit. And right away, we see some value here. We have a health section here. We also have information on resource usage, system information, and even some config info. So it's really cool that it's providing us with this information here. But right now, we have limited access because administrative access, even if your user has access to run administrative commands, that's disabled by default. But all you have to do is click right here to turn that on. And you would do this anytime you plan on making changes to the server. I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you needed to. But on my end, I'm sure I'll need administrative access at some point, so I figure I may as well turn it on for this demonstration. Now what I'll do is type in my password again, the same one I used to log in with, my Linux password, basically. And then I'll authenticate. And notice that the warning that I didn't have administrative access, that went away. So now I should have full access. In fact, it even shows right here that I do have administrative access. Anyway, let's take a look around the console. Again, this is Cockpit. We'll be looking at Houston shortly, but this is Cockpit, which is what Houston is built on top of. And some of the things that we could do here, for example, is check out the logs on the server. Now, by default, it's only going to show me errors, and, well, there's no errors, so there's nothing for me to see here. That's a good thing, but just for demonstration purposes, I'll just make this show even more information. By choosing info and above, that's going to trigger this to show all kinds of log entries here. So that's pretty cool. We also have a networking section. Here we can set up interfaces. We can configure the firewall. We can even see network logs. So that's pretty cool. When it comes to accounts, we can create new users and new groups as well in this section. We have a section for services, applications. We also have a section for software updates. And in my case, all the updates have been installed. I'm fully up to date, as you should be as well. And check this out. I can enable automatic updates by simply clicking on this button. How cool is that? I'll set it to security updates only. And every day at, let's say, 2 a.m., that should be good enough for me. We even have a terminal right here. So if you wanted to execute commands against your server, you could do that within the terminal section. If you're following along with me, at this point you have Cockpit installed on your server. So what I recommend you do is click around and just have some fun with it. Explore and see what it's all about. Now what we're going to do is see what exactly is different when I compare Cockpit to Houston. Here we have the login screen for Houston. Once we've logged in, we'll see an interface that looks a lot like Cockpit's interface, and that's because it is. Again, Houston is Cockpit with additional features. But how exactly does the Houston Command Center differ from Cockpit? First, Houston was created by 45 drives, and they ship Houston pre-installed on their servers. But even though it's bundled with their servers, you don't have to purchase a 45 drive server in order to use it. However, there are some optional plugins that are specific to 45 drives hardware, but you could just ignore those if you don't have one of their servers. Another difference between Houston and Cockpit is that Houston is available for fewer Linux distributions when compared to Cockpit. At the time of recording, I was able to find installation instructions for Ubuntu 2004 as well as Rocky Linux 8. You could probably install it on other distributions, but I can't promise anything. Cockpit, on the other hand, is included in the default repositories for many distributions. I hope in the future Cockpit is enabled for more distributions, because I think the lack of universal distribution support is its biggest weakness. But the primary difference, though, is the additional features that Houston enables that Cockpit itself doesn't have. For example, ZFS support, file sharing, and more. 
Houston consists of additional modules that were either enhanced in some way or are altogether new. For that reason, Houston will look a lot like Cockpit, so it's kind of like Cockpit++. And the best way to get familiar with Houston is to check it out, so let's do that. All right, in this section, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to check out Houston. At first, it might not look like anything has changed at all. When we logged into Cockpit, we saw this exact same login screen. But that does make sense considering that Houston is built on top of Cockpit. Anyway, let's log in. We just enter the user credentials for our Linux user. So nothing too out of the ordinary so far. And now we have logged in to Houston. We can now see some changes. The login screen looked the same, but now the color scheme is a bit different here in Houston. We have the name of the server right up here. And just like with Cockpit itself, we can enable administrative access by clicking this button right here. Notice that it tells us that we have limited access right now. That's how it starts. And this should change as soon as I turn on administrative access. So let's do it. I'll type my Linux password right here. And I'll press enter. Now, as you can see, I have administrative access to the server. We also have right here an option to reboot the server. We can also shut it down if we prefer to do that. And also, just like Cockpit, we have all of this information right here that gives us some useful info when it comes to our server. We can see that it's up to date. The resource usage doesn't look all that bad. There's plenty of resources free here. We have system information about our server. We also have some configuration info as well. Notice that we can join a domain if we want to by clicking right here. I don't have a domain, but if we did, then I'd be able to join one. Now going through the sections here, underneath the system, we're under overview. We have a networking tab here. And just like with normal cockpit, it allows us to configure our firewall and other things like our network interfaces, for example. Now here we have a ZFS section that was not present before. But when I click on it, I'm not able to actually use it. What's going on here? Well, I did install ZFS support, but if you see an error like this, that might mean that you have to mod probe the ZFS module into the kernel. To do that, here's what we can do. We can run mod probe as root or with sudo, and then we'll type ZFS. That's the module that we want to mod into the kernel. Pretty self-explanatory there. But anyway, now that I've inserted that module into the kernel, I should be able to refresh it and get ZFS support. Let's see. And sure enough, Houston is now able to control ZFS. I'm not going to set up ZFS in this video, but if I did want to, I'd be able to do so right here from within this section. Now we also have a section for virtual machines as well, which is new. And this is really cool. We can import a virtual machine or create one. So by installing the Houston modules here into Cockpit, I have this option. How cool is that? User accounts, pretty self-explanatory there. You could create users within Houston. We can also manage services. And this could be very useful if you want to see which services are running on your server. That's pretty cool. Log information, we can see logs here. That's pretty cool. But we're going to skip these sections here because they're specific to 45 Drive's hardware. So we'll skip all the way down to Navigator and take a look at this we could browse the file system right here from within Houston. That's pretty cool. We also have file sharing. So if I wanted to configure a file share, I could do that here. We will need to add this option to our configuration within Samba to enable Houston to work with it. But the fact that we can create shares within Samba for a server is pretty cool. If you prefer NFS, no problem. We could click on NFS here. We can import an NFS config. We can export a config. But either way, we have NFS support. That's pretty cool. Continuing, we have benchmarks, applications, diagnostic reports, if we need that kind of thing. We have access to kernel dumps, software updates, and subscriptions. As you can see, Houston is pretty self-explanatory. You simply install it on your server, and then after you do install it, you just log into the interface anytime you need this interface or you need an easier method of managing your server. I do recommend that you ensure that this particular port is not accessible by anyone but you. If somebody was to brute force your password, for example, then they'd be able to have access to this as well. 
If in doubt, just configure the firewall to only allow port 9090 to the IP address of your workstation. That is beyond the scope of this video, but it's just a tip to help keep you secure. In this section, I'm going to walk you through the process of installing Houston. On my end, I am using Rocky Linux 8. The first thing you'll have to consider is which distribution your server is running. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, Houston officially supports Rocky Linux 8 as well as Ubuntu 20.04. There might be other distributions that you can install this onto, but again, during recording time, I was only able to find instructions for Rocky Linux 8 as well as Ubuntu 20.04. On my end, as you can see, I have Rocky Linux 8 installed, so I'll be following the instructions provided by 45 drives for Rocky Linux 8. I'll leave a link for those instructions down in the description below as well as the instructions for Ubuntu if you need those. Now let's look through the process of installing Houston. The first thing we'll do, at least here on Rocky Linux, is install the Apple repository. We could do that by running sudo and then dnf install and the package that we'll install is apple-release. So the final command will look just like that. If you weren't already familiar with Apple, it's a popular repository for enterprise Linux. So what we're doing right here is we are installing a package, a package that's available in the official Rocky Linux repositories, that's going to add that repository to our system. So I'll press enter, Y and then enter to accept the installation. And that should be all there is to it. Now that we have that particular repository installed, there's a few more commands that we'll need to run. Now for this command, I will need root access. So what I'll do is switch to root. Now that I'm switched over to root, I could go ahead and paste in that command, and here it is. Now if you want to copy and paste this command like I just did, you could grab it from the official instructions, or you could also get it from the blog post that accompanies this video. Now down below, I'll have a link for all of those things. But anyway, what I'm doing right now is I am setting SE Linux to permissive mode. And again, this is coming straight from the instructions that 45 Drives has on their website. So I'll press enter, and that's all there is for that. Next, what we'll do is add the 45 Drives repository, and I'll paste that command right here. And look how quick that was. We should have everything we need right now to install Houston, so let's do it. Just like before, I'll paste in the command that we need right here. There's going to be a number of packages that we'll need. Again, just grab the commands from one of the articles down below. Anyway, I'll paste it in, and there it is. So now I'll press enter. And at this point, we have Houston installed on our server. Before we check it out though, if you want ZFS support, I'm going to show you how to set that up. If you don't plan on using ZFS, you can skip to the next section. But if you do, there's a few packages that you'll need to install in order to add ZFS support to Houston. First of all, we'll need to install ZFS on Linux itself. Otherwise, the ZFS module for Houston won't have anything to manage. Again, I just pasted the command right here. You could grab it from the articles. But what I'll do is press enter, and what should happen is ZFS should be installed on our server. So I'll press enter, and let's see what does happen. So far, so good. So I will confirm the change. Now that we have ZFS installed on our server, we can install ZFS support for Houston. To do that, I'll run dnf install. Since I'm logged in as root, I don't need sudo. And the package that we'll be installing for Houston is cockpit then ZFS, and then Manager, just like that. I'll press Enter. Let's install it. I'll accept this as well. And now that part is done. Now that we've installed Cockpit and Houston on our server, we want to see whether or not it's running. Specifically, we'll check the socket. And just like before, it's disabled, and it's also not running. And to fix that, we'll run systemctl enable dash dash now and cockpit.socket. And at this point, Houston should be ready to go. Let's see. And here we have cockpit from earlier in the video. So what I'll do is navigate to the new server that I just set up. And we set up Houston at port 9090. 
and 9090 is the default port for Houston. So far, nothing is different. We'll just accept this right here. So let's log in. I'll type in the credentials for my Linux user account on this server, and let's log in. So as you can see, Houston is working. They've successfully installed it on our server. And that's our video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We did a lot. I showed you the differences between Cockpit and Houston, and then I showed you how to install Houston. I gave you an overview. It was a fun video because I had a ton of fun producing this video. If you enjoyed this content, then please consider clicking that like button to let YouTube know that we need more Linux content here on YouTube. I would really appreciate that. Also, be sure to subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.